Welcome, curious viewers, to Science and Spirituality. Today's show, the first in a two-part series, features the fascinating subject of crop circles. The debates and investigative studies on these amazing phenomena, which seem to appear out of the blue, have been of ongoing interest to researchers from various scientific disciplines as well as the general public for many years. From an aerial view, the circles are wonderfully arranged in impressive geometric forms, and some believe they are produced by otherworldly energies. Crop circles are very large patterns that are suddenly discovered in the fields of growing crops. Mm -hmm. So the main crops could be wheat, or oats, or barley, or oilseed canola, or even corn. And the crop circles seem to be made mostly in the middle of the night. And this is uh, in England where most of the crop circles happen. The, the night is very short in the summer because they're so far north. Supreme Master Television recently interviewed renowned crop circle expert Barbara Lamb of California, USA to gain her perspectives on this intriguing topic. She is a much sought after speaker on crop circles, extraterrestrials, and UFOs. In 2001, she co-authored Crop Circles Revealed, a book that comprehensively investigates these beautiful creations. So in just a few hours, maybe four or five hours of complete darkness, something very mysterious and wonderful happens. A large pattern, and a be beautiful artistic pattern, is mysteriously laid down in the fields. The crop circles are made by what we call the mysterious phenomenon, by some unknown source that doesn't seem to be human and doesn't seem to be anything of the earth, um, when this source lays down the crops, it's so gentle and so perfect that the plants just bend over an inch or so from the ground and they're not damaged in any way whatsoever. They can continue to grow lying parallel mm -hmm. to the ground and ripen to full maturity. Although some say that crop circles are simply clever, human-made formations, many extraordinary facts lead to the conclusion that the source of most of these mysterious designs is extraterrestrial. Freddy Silva, founder of Crop Circle Secrets, an organization that conducts research on the phenomena, says that true crop circles are not entirely round, but tend toward a slightly elliptical shape. Human methods to produce crop circles require a fixed central rope attached to planks to flatten the crops and therefore cannot effectively achieve this shape. In my opinion, the majority of crop circles are made by this genuine phenomenon, the mysterious unknown source. There are some people usually young men, mm -hmm. who will go out in the field sometimes and they will make a pattern too. Now, the big difference is that with the man-made patterns, when the stalks are bent over and laid down at ground level, uh, they break where they're bent over. They just crack mm -hmm. and break and th the plants die because they're not getting the nourishment mm -hmm. from the roots in the ground. So they are lifeless and dull listless and there's no energy change, there's no sign of anything mysterious having happened in those man-made crop circles. So the genuine ones in contrast, they have an increase in energy. People who are sensitive about energies can feel the energy increase in a genuine crop circle. 
crop circle researchers say with real crop circles, the energy of the site is altered to the extent that sometimes the functions of mobile phones and other electronic devices are affected. We use the same instrumentation, the same testing devices in all of the crop circles. When we first know of a new crop circle, we test it with these different methods. We don't know initially if something is man-made or genuine, uh, but these instruments help us. Also, we look at the details of the way that the uh, crop circle is laid down. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at uh, changes in the crops. In the genuine ones, for instance, there is so much heat applied to the stalks as they're being laid down and very often uh, curved or swirled or even made into sculptural shapes. Mm -hmm. There's a huge amount of energy in changes like that. And there are changes in the plants themselves because of this high heat um, that seems to be applied in the making of a crop circle. The growth nodes, which is kind of like a knuckle in a finger, the, um, the growth nodes are expanded Sometimes they're stretched, elongated, sometimes they're swollen out to the sides, and sometimes um, there's a hole that's been blown in the growth node from the inside of the plant. We notice other changes too. There are actually up to 17 different kinds of biophysical changes that can happen in these genuine crop circles. It actually seems to be very helpful for the plants mm -hmm. and for people who eat those plants as well. Um, there has been a lot of tests and experiments done. The seeds, for instance, that come from a genuine crop mm -hmm. circle group of plants, even though they're sort of dwarfed and shrunken a bit and misshapen, when those seeds are planted uh, next to control plants from the same crop but outside the crop circle, um, the genuine crop circle plants grow 40 to 50 to 60 percent uh, faster, mm -hmm. stronger, hardier, and it's claimed more nourishing. So the plants are actually improved in the crop circle. Ms. Lamb says that some people have spiritual experiences when encountering real crop circles, and others have physical conditions healed upon coming into contact with the energy emanating from them. Or many times too, people will receive messages when in a genuine crop circle. It seems to be like a spiritual encounter happening. And many of us too actually feel that we're being observed in particular crop circles. And so I and some of my friends feel quite reverent about whoever or whatever it was that made the crop circle. And we just automatically give thanks. The circle's intelligent, intricate designs have mystified many researchers from various scientific disciplines to the present day. Peer-reviewed scientific studies suggest that genuine crop circles are created by a source beyond our conventional knowledge. There are definitely different theories about how these genuine crop circles are made. Um, one of them is that there are these balls of light which have been seen by quite a number of people and photographed. Sometimes in the daytime, uh, they look like a white globe of light and they slightly gl glowing. They're very beautiful. They um, have been seen, videotaped, photographed, flying across a crop field that is going to be receiving a crop circle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these balls of night have been seen um, at nighttime as well. And they tend to look orange or sort of a peachy color or red or blue or white on different occasions. And where they are seen sort of flying over and hovering over a crop field and even dipping down into the crop as if to test the soil, perhaps. Mm -hmm. 
Um, in those locations, a few hours later, a, a new crop circle is made. So it certainly seems, putting two and two together, that the ball of light certainly had something to do with the making of a crop circle. Also, in 1996, a young man camped up on a high hill overlooking a wheat field. Um, he was just sleeping on the ground with his video camera right next to him. And just about at dawn, he woke up, sent something, grabbed his camera, and uh, videoed two balls of light coming over that wheat field down below. And you can see that a beautiful, perfect crop circle is being laid down. So two balls of light came, and then the next second, two more balls from the other direction came, and this beautiful six-pointed, simple snowflake pattern was actually laid down. And it certainly appears as if it was laid down by these balls of light. So that's one source. Now, there are some wonderful biophysical scientists in Michigan, um, Dr. W.C. Levengood and his team, after studying thousands and thousands of plants that have been sent to them from crop circles and also control plants always from the same crop outside the crop circle, determined that crop circles are made by a swirling vortex of energy. And this is a complex combination of plasma energies. They determine that this vortex of energy comes from the higher atmosphere, swirls down into a wheat field or other crop, and that this vortex of energy is making the crop circle pattern. Dr. Levengood, a now retired researcher from the Institute of Science and Technology at the University of Michigan, USA, was a renowned plant biophysicist for over 50 years. He specialized in biochemical research on plants and seeds, including possible molecular changes in crop circle plants. In 1994, he published an article entitled Anatomical Anomalies in Crop Formation Plants in the peer-reviewed journal Physiologia Plantarum. In it, he states, the affected plants have components which suggest the involvement of rapid air movement, ionization, electric fields, and transient high temperatures combined with an oxidizing atmosphere one naturally occurring and organized force incorporating each of these features is an ion plasma vortex, one very high energy example being a lightning charge. They also determine that this vortex of energy is really hot. It's at least 800 degrees Fahrenheit in temperature. And normally, if you had all that heat coming down into a field of crop, um, it would start a fire and burn the field. But in this case, it doesn't. It just lays down the plants in these beautiful curved, we call them magical bends, mm -hmm. as the plants are bent over just an inch or so above ground level. And instead of charring or burning the plants, it seems as if this vortex of energy is drawing up moisture from under the surface of the soil. And in England, where the crop circles are, the water table is high under the surface of the soil. Geological aquifers are under most of the areas where the crop circles happen. And an aquifer means that it's very porous soil, limestone, sandstone, chalk, and it will absorb the English rain beautifully, and it also will release the energy easily. Treasured viewers, please join us again next week for part two of our program, where we'll continue our engaging discussion on crop circles with the knowledgeable Barbara Lamb. For more details on Barbara Lamb, please visit www.barbaralammft.com.